and welcome. Compressed natural gas CNG also engages prime attention as alternative energy source, and we're looking at how the initiative is being translated into reality, even as the NNPC PTDF are involved in oil and gas capacity development with an eye on cost reduction and profitability. July 2020 was a good business month for the National Oil Company with 20.36 billion Naira trading surplus. It's got plenty of accompanying numbers and also cheering story is the 2020 African Arbitration Awards Lead Council case team, which was won by NNPC's litigation team. Rather peculiar award and you sure need to know what it's all about. That's part of what we're tracking in this episode of the program and there's more. Welcome to the program, the flagship of oil and gas sector on Nigerian media. My name is Akin Agbujile. This is Oil and Gas Forum. Nigerians, it is high time we take our destinies in our hands by supporting the government in the complete removal of subsidy on premium motor spirit, otherwise called petrol. Subsidy on petrol has led to loss of trillions of naira in the last few years. The trillions saved from the monster of petrol subsidy will be used to provide schools, hospitals, roads, portable water, steady payment of salaries and other social amenities. Let's listen to the voice of reason by supporting this policy direction for our collective good. NNPC, we taught your lives in many positive ways. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has pledged to support ongoing initiatives by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources to provide alternative energy source to Nigerians through aggressive activation of compressed natural gas CNG refill stations for motorists across the country. Speaking on a TVC program, Business Nigeria, the group managing director of the corporation, Mala Melikeri, affirmed that the National Oil Company has already keyed into the gas penetration agenda as championed by the Honorable Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Chief Timipre Silva. We are aligning with the drive of the Minister of State of Petroleum Research to deliver the gas penetration strategy to improve on gas penetration. As a first step, you know, NMPC is moving ahead with all the major gas infrastructure projects on schedule, on time, and on cost, and also to go to the granular to provide uh, CNG facilities in our location. We are working on that very soon. We'll come that, put that on the table as a, actually a palliative to the, uh, the con uh, concurrent rise in the price of petroleum uh, from PMS that uh, Nigerians are, are con conscious of. And once those are put into place and we keep playing, Nigeria will see, see more CNG in a place, more LPG availability across nooks and crannies, which will help almost in controlling the certification and, uh, and many other adverse impact of uh, using other sources of fuel. Malam Kiari also shed more light on the status of the nation's refineries, noting that the plants were deliberately shut down to allow for a robust diagnosis of the issues which had made it impossible for the facilities to operate up to their nameplate capacities. And when we talk about rehabilitation and turnaround, there are two different uh, concepts. Turnaround maintenance is about routine work that you do to a plant every year and so that it continues to run. But when you say rehab, it means something fundamentally is wrong with that plant. And we change the strategy. We said, well, let's get EPC contractors to do this for us. And I can tell you, for Potaco Refinery, by January next year, our plan was to start off in January 20, uh, 2020. That didn't work out because of the change in strategy and, of course, the impact of COVID-19, which made us to lose close to seven months of uh, activity. We are back on track. We will complete the EPC contract process. We will put a contract in place and definitely to be an 18-month program and we will deliver the Potaco Refinery. Concurrent to this, we are looking at the Wari and the Kaduna refinery. In line with the federal government's aspiration to reposition the oil and gas industry by promoting local content, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, 
and the Petroleum Technology Development Fund, PTDF, have built a state-of-the-art training facility to encourage in-country capacity development. The Chief Operating Officer, Ventures and Business Development of the NNPC Engineer Adeyemi Adisunji, who was on an inspection visit to the multi-billionaire facility at the National Institute of Petroleum Studies, Kaduna, disclosed that the partnership between NNPC and PTDF was aimed at closing the gap in the industry's capacity building services. This is a program, is an initiative to ensure that we we raise the bar in terms of competencies in the oil and gas industry and also to domesticate capability training and development in Nigeria. On his part, the executive secretary of PTDF, Bello Guso, said the project was meant to domesticate oil and gas capacity building in country for enhanced value. What we are doing today is going back to that original concept of bring domesticated capacity building and skills development to the Nigerian oil and gas industry in country. And this is one of the projects that are dedicated for that purpose. Also speaking on the significance of the project, the group general manager and NPC Learning Academy, Mr. Isan Lapai Abubakar, said his team would leverage on the opportunity to reduce cost and drive his division along the line of profitability. We will be able to latch on to use those training facilities in order to reduce cost of our training activities and generate more, more revenue for NMPC. The litigation team of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has won the leading case counsel team of the 2020 Africa Arbitration Awards. The award was given to the NNPC litigation team in recognition of its stellar performance at the 8th edition of the East African International Arbitration Conference, EAIC, which held in Nairobi, Kenya recently, with participants joining in virtually. At the conference, which was aimed at promoting commercial arbitration and showcasing African lawyers and law firms, which have performed well in arbitration practice, the NNPC legal team gave a presentation on the challenges and lessons learned from arbitrations and the successes recorded. Among the successful arbitration cases showcased by the NNPC legal team at the conference were the IPCO Nigeria versus NNPC in respect of a dispute over the Boni Export Terminal project in which $367.5 million was saved after 13 years of litigation and SOENP Nigeria Limited versus NNPC in respect of the dispute over the interpretation of the production sharing contract PSC covering oil prospecting license OPL 209 oil mining lease OML 133 in which the enforcement of 2.7 billion dollars claim was dismissed. So the leading case council team that have been nominated are um, Piro Chambers, Jemiles and Co and Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation and NPC. And the winner is, kindly Steve, with the drum roll, and NPC, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. Congratulations. <laughs> wow, congratulations to the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. Well done. The Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has recorded an increased trading surplus of 20.36 billion naira in July 2020 compared to the 2.12 billion naira surplus in June 2020 in its operations. The report explained that details of the figures captured in the July 2020 NNPC monthly financial and operations report indicated that the 858% overall upswell in performance was largely due to the 178% rise in the surplus posted by the Nigerian Petroleum Development Company, NPDC, NNPC's flagship upstream entity. The report stated that the NPDC's impressive result was bolstered by the continuous improvement in global crude oil demand for the third consecutive month. Similarly, the report said the corporation's fortune was further enhanced by the 739% increased profit posted by the Integrated Data Services Limited, IDSL, and a 51% growth in performance by Duke Oil Incorporated, both companies of NNPC. 
returns from NNPC Retail Limited and Nigerian Gas Marketing Company NGMC during the period under review also grew by 28% and 24% respectively owing to increased sales and improved debt collection. On the banks of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, in the historical land of Mesopotamia, a cradle of civilization, OPEC was born. It happened on September 14, 1960 in Al Sharp Hall in Baghdad, with no fanfare and no glare from the international media. OPEC's development over the past six decades has not been a straight line. But with 60 years of institutional wisdom and a brilliant history, it is a mature, dependable and essential partner in energy governance. Today, OPEC holds meetings of the conference with its ministers, as well as ministerial OPEC and non-OPEC meetings at least twice a year to vigilantly follow market changes and make educated and cooperative decisions in support of market stability. Additionally, it holds regular technical meetings and dialogues with an increasing number of partners. From the initial five founder members, today OPEC has grown to include 13 sovereign nations on three continents. Together, these countries hold 80% of the world's proven oil reserves and provide around 40% of global crude oil production. The impulse for OPEC came in response to the activities and practices of the Seven Sisters. These were large international oil companies dominated by the established industrial powers. Chevron, Exxon, Mobil, Texaco, Gulf, British Petroleum and Royal Dutch Shell. Oil producing countries relied on them for oil revenues and wanted to exercise their inalienable right to permanent sovereignty over their natural resources in the interest of their national growth and development. The formation of OPEC was, in this sense, a pioneering act. The real spark came after the powerful international oil companies decided to reduce the posted price for a barrel of oil without asking the host governments. This led to a very quiet meeting on the sidelines of the first Arab Petroleum Congress at the Mahdi Yacht Club in Cairo in April 1959 with representatives of OPEC's five founding members Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. Here, a gentleman's agreement, the precursor to OPEC, was endorsed. Few could predict the powerful impact this meeting would have on the future of the oil industry, and indeed, the world. Juan Pablo Perez Alfonso of Venezuela, Abdullah al Tareki of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Talat Ashebani of Iraq, Dr. Fouad Rahani of Iran and Ahmed Sayed Omar of Kuwait joined together over a year later on a fateful September day in 1960 and created OPEC. For its first five years, OPEC was headquartered in Geneva. But in 1965, it moved to elegant historic Vienna. The original host agreement was signed by Ashraf Lutfi, then OPEC Secretary General, and Dr. Bruno Kreisky, the Austrian Foreign Minister at the time. OPEC has called the city home ever since. The organization's international status was cemented when it registered with the UN Secretariat as an intergovernmental organization in November 1962. 
OPEC confirmed support of its principal objectives through its associated solemn declarations under the following three themes. Stability of global energy markets. Energy for sustainable development. And energy and environment. In response, a new era in OPEC and non-OPEC cooperation came about with the signing of the Declaration of Cooperation in December 2016 by 24 OPEC and non-OPEC oil producing countries. The Declaration of Cooperation and its signatories transformed the oil market, bringing down a massive overhang in OECD commercial stock levels which thus supported world economic growth. The latest milestone in this unique collaboration was reached in July 2019 with the signing of the Charter of Cooperation, which provides a long-term framework for the partnership. The emergence of a pandemic in early 2020 emphasized the need for the Declaration of Cooperation. The COVID-19 pandemic has pervaded almost every aspect of human life. It is a major disruptor in terms of the tragic loss of life. It has forced governments around the world into widespread lockdowns. Extreme destruction of up to a third of total oil demand followed worldwide lockdown efforts, which severely restricted the movement of people and closed down businesses. Every producer, many of whom are developing nations, has been impacted. No one is immune. OPEC and its partners once again came through with an unprecedented production adjustment, both in amount and in length. In addition, the shock led other large, previously uninvolved producers and world leaders to join in the conversation, offering support for the work of OPEC. Today, there are 13 member countries in OPEC. Algeria, Angola, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, the Islamic Republic of Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Libya, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Venezuela. Since 2016, they work regularly together with their non-OPEC counterparts in the Declaration of Cooperation to address market stability and increasingly technical and other issues. OPEC has shown itself to be a leader and will continue to play a major role in energy governance, working with multilateral partners to tackle the world's challenges today and tomorrow. The organization has played a large role in the creation of a new world and modern society over the past 60 years by ensuring the supply of petroleum. We believe the best years are yet to come. For the future of our planet and development for all, OPEC will be there as an important instrument of change. Welcome to the feedback segment of the program. My name is Julia Auta. The federal government has declared 2020 as the year of gas to expand domestic gas utilization, expand gas infrastructure, and expand her gas export footprints for the benefits of the Nigerian economy. Our Robin Kamara brings to you some of the views of Nigerians about this noble move by the federal government. The recent uh, uh, flag up of the Ajakuta gas pipeline to Kanu is a welcome development, not to even the northern part, but to the country at large, because it will boost the economy and it will help the masses. It's a good step in the right direction, as it will enhance, uh, enable Nigerians to have uh, to be to have access to gas, both domestic and otherwise. Uh, we thank God for the federal government. Uh, they actually have done better for reducing 
the price of gas. At least we that is consuming it, we are happy for that. The gas we now bring down, we make a cost of a kerosene and all the rest of it to come down and people will be able to afford it. Uh, more Nigerians will be exposed to the use of gas. Secondly, it will also help in the economy of uh, the country because the more it is being purchased, the more it generates income for the government. So, uh, and I want to believe that um, it's one of the best things that the government has done so far. That gas is cheaper. And then it might be easy for all the common, the civil servants to afford. <coughs> it makes life easier and other things too. And then it's also good if it's achieved. It will reduce um, emission of um, carbon monoxide. We have a safer environment. Nigerians have said it all. And with the dogged determination of the federal government, along with the NNPC, 2020 will indeed be a year of gas for all our sundry. And that's it on the segment. Stay with us for more on the program. Hello and welcome to this segment of the program. My name is Tola Bobuade. Did you know that the upstream sector is also known as the exploration and production or E&P sector? Did you know that the exploration and production sector encompasses activities related to searching for, recovering and producing crude oil and natural gas? It is also all about locating the wells drilling, designing, construction, operation, and management of oil and gas acreages. Did you know that in the exploration and production sector, you cannot find oil if you do not drill wells? Did you also know that the upstream sector is regulated in terms of production, access to reserves, pricing, taxation, and more stringent environmental regulations? Now you know. Please stay tuned for the rest of the program. Hello and welcome to Global Crude Oil Outlook. Oil prices fell after rising steeply in the two previous sessions as concerns about weak fuel demand re-emerged and producers in the Gulf of Mexico prepared to resume output following Hurricane Sally. Brent crude futures fell 67 cents or 1.6 percent to $41.55 per barrel after climbing 4.2 percent. United States West Texas Intermediate WTI crude futures were down 70 cents or 1.7 percent to $39.00. 46 cents per barrel after jumping 4.9 percent. Meanwhile, Market Intelligence Department of NPC's London office reports that the International Energy Agency IEA has lowered its projections for oil demand growth this year and next, noting that the coronavirus pandemic has caused global demand to drift back to where it stood in 2013. In its latest monthly oil market report, the IEA pegs demand in the second half of this year 400,000 barrels per day below the estimated published last month that puts the average for the whole of 2020 at 91.7 million barrels per day. And that's it on this segment of the program. I am Owego Okolo. That's Oil and Gas Forum for this edition. Thanks for joining us. Takeaway for this edition, if you ask me, is the compressed natural gas, which is loading plenty of choice and alternative, eco-friendliness, efficiency. Wait for it. Enjoy your week.